So today we're going to look at using the wireframe shader in Arnold in Maya 2018, uh, but also to look at a slightly more elaborate setup to make something that looks like this sort of a cage of poly edges um, that has uh, one color on the outside and a different color on the inside. So it might be a little difficult to interpret what we're seeing here, but uh, those black edges are the back inside of the head. These blue edges are edges that are facing us. Um, so this is the model here. This is from uh, 1024, the scanning and photogrammetry company. So um, let's take a look at how to set this up. So um, we'll just start by taking the model and just doing a basic wireframe shader. So wireframe shading is very easy in Arnold. Um, let me just clear my area here. So we can just create an AI wireframe shader. And if we just assign this to our object, then we'll see that it looks like this. So uh, the settings for a wireframe shader are very simple. Uh, it just has either triangles or polygons. Um, or it also has patches, which I guess would be for uh, a model made out of NURBS patches. I'll just stick to polygons here. And just, you know, what you would expect, you can change the color of the edges, you can change the color of the fill to make something different. So quite easy, really, to You can do stuff like this in the Tune Shader um, as well. Um, but the uh, wireframe shader is just a quick and easy way to render your wireframes. And of course we can change the width here. And this um, can use, it can be rendered with any filter in Arnold. So you know if you've used the Tune shader for doing outlines, uh, the AI Tune with Arnold, that the filter needs to be set to contour. That's not the case here. Um, you can use any of these filters here and this will still render. Okay, so let's look at how we can set this up to make this sort of trans like a transparent cage. So let me just pause this for a sec and we'll go back into the hypershade. So uh, I'm just going to keep the name of that the same. I'm going to make an AI standard surface. And let me just rename this. So um, we'll call this C through wire. And I'll call this front because later I'm going to create one for the, the inside back. So we can just take this wireframe shader, take the out color and pipe it into the base color here. And if I apply this to our object, then we can get something like this, which is also a nice effect. So you are using the wireframe to go into the color attribute and we get this sort of kind of ceramic phrenology uh, looking head. Just trying to fit everything on screen here so we can see what's going on. But um, it's not really the color that we want to affect. We want to affect the uh, transparency. Um, so in Arnold, the standard surface transparency is either uh, defined as opacity or transmission. So opacity is more like a cutout. Transmission is uh, will be f like physically transmissive, treating it like glass or something like that. So we could just take this wireframe shader and pipe it into the transmission strength, because that means. Uh, where it's blank, I'm sorry, where it's black, it will not be transmissive, it will be opaque. And where it is white, um, it will be transmissive because white is 100% of whatever that attribute is. Um, so if we look over here, I can't just take out color and attach it to transmission strength. It just says transmission, but that's, or pardon me, transmission weight. Uh, because this is a single channel attribute, out color is a triple channel attribute. So we can just take out color R put into transmission. So you can see what's happening. It's doing what we'd expect, um, except it's treating it like a piece of glass rather than um, just a see-through object. 
And there are two things that are going on here. First of all, we still have specularity everywhere. So that makes the outer surface look continuous and not just empty in these spaces, but just a see-through surface. And we want to make it look empty. So we have to solve the specularity issue showing up in these regions. And we don't want it to be so um, refractive, acting like a solid piece of glass. So there are a couple of ways that we can solve this. So first, if we just went into the AI standard surface, move these over. Um, so specularity, uh, sorry, transmission, um, we have that, this is yellow because it's mapped to that um, wireframe node. So we could um, up here in, sorry, specularity, turn the index of refraction to one. And that will kind of give us the look that we want. So with an index of refraction of one, we are not getting a refraction and it looks uh, the way we want it to look. We could also do this by going down to geometry here. Um, this is in the AI standard surface and declare this a thin walled object. So this will should look the same, but uh, this will override all that um, index of refraction in the transmission. So the reason you might want to do this is so you can keep the index of refraction at a different value because the index of refraction not only controls how it refracts through transmission, but what the speculars are going to look like. And we may still want speculars. So this way we can declare it thin walled, still have index of refraction, um, and just have more control. Okay, so now we want to get rid of the speculars in these regions. So we really only want specularity to show up on the edges, not in the spaces between. Just to make this a little clearer, I'm going to make my wireframe thicker. So my line width is 2 right now, so if I change it to 5. Okay, so you can see what's going on here. There are a couple issues here. You can see there's a bit of kind of edging around here. I think we have to use opacity as well, but we'll figure that out as we go. But you can see it's shiny everywhere. You're getting reflections of the ground plane and everything. But if we want those reflections to be limited to these black edges, um, we can use the wireframe again. So we could connect um, out color R to um, specular. So this is specular weight. However, it's not doing the right thing. So the black color going into specular says no specular. So black is zero. And the white color in the spaces in between is white. It's one. It's 100%. So that's saying fully specular. <clears throat> so if we just look at this, let me get this specular highlight in a good spot. So this one is crossing over this edge right now. And if I connect wireframe out color R to specular, doesn't seem to be doing what I want. Let's try this a little differently. Let's delete that. What if we take out color all to specular color? Ah, okay, well that works. So we can take out color all and connect it to specular color. And you can see that this is working in a sense. We're getting no specularity on the edges, but we are getting specularity on the spaces between. So the map is doing what it's meant to be doing. So, sorry, I made a mistake. Connect out color to specular color. Um, but we want the reverse to happen. So we can just put a reverse node in between. So we can take out color into the input of the reverse node, and then from the output, go into specular color. So we should see, yep, yeah, so now the specularity is restricted only to the edge. And so now this is looking like a see-through object with no specular anywhere except on these edges here. One thing you'll also notice is that my uh, shadow is showing 
this texture. And that is because, uh, and I did this earlier, but in the shape node of the model, you have to make sure opaque is ch unchecked. If I check this, then you'll see the shadows do not respect all this information about the uh, transmissive nature of the material. So <clears throat> we also have um, opacity in the shader here. I'm not sure if we need to do this. We're getting close here. Uh, no, I thought I was seeing little edges on here. But what if we connect wireframe to opacity? Ah, so that's not any good. Undo that. What if we connect the um, the reversed version of that to opacity? Okay, so that's not changing anything, but it is making an alpha cutout here. So let's look at the alpha channel too. So we're not seeing any alpha right now just because my light in the background is set so it appears in the camera. Right, so now we're seeing this cut into the alpha. Of course, we've got this plane here, which is um, blocking some of that. Okay, so, so far, so good. So I don't know if we need to do that reverse into opacity. Let's just turn that off and make sure opacity is set to white. Ah, so this is kind of interesting. Um, when I have that off, uh, so we do need that in opacity to cut the alpha channel. So the reverse of the wireframe has to go into opacity to make sure that we're cutting an alpha channel here. Okay, I knew there was a reason. <laughs> okay, let's make those lines a little bit thinner now. And I'm going to make my light visible in the camera again, just so it's a little easier to see what we're doing. Okay, now finally we will use a node called the uh, AI two-sided node. AI two-sided. And it just does what it says on the box. You put in a front and a back. There you go. So you could do this with um, the sampler info um, node in Maya with a conditional node and the flipped normals attributes of sampler info and set a condition that if the normals are flipped, it gets this material. If they're pointing outwards, you get this other material. So it's possible. But it's kind of a pain. So I'm just going to duplicate this, the wire front. And I'll go to, in the Hypershade, Edit, Duplicate, Shading Network with Connections to Network. And I'll just call this Shading Wire Back. This way, if I make a change to, you know, the reverse node or to the wireframe, it goes into both of these. Okay, so let's connect these now. So we'll take the see-through wire front connected to the front of the two-sided node, see-through wire back, which is ex exactly the same right now, and we'll go into the back, and then we will apply this, oops, to this guy here. Sorry. So the two-sided shader, oh, I'm off screen here. The two-sided shader, I'm just gonna drag it onto here. So now if we render this, I'm going to save my file. Oh, there it is. So it should look exactly the same, and so far it does. So now, if we go to the back AI standard surface, and I'll just change its um, color right now. Oh, okay. Actually, 
I had forgot I still have the color mapped to the AI wireframe in both. I'm going to break that connection in both because uh, we don't really need that because the transparency still does the same job for us. Uh, okay, um, the color right now is set to mid gray. So for the front, let's change that to white. And so it's just returning gray because of the lighting in the space. And then the, the see-through wire back, let's change that to black, right? So now you can see the wire in the back on the inside back surface is rendered in black. And now this just gives us a little bit of freedom. So um, I can go into the front. I'm sorry, this is getting so messy here. Let's just tidy this up. So in the front AI standard surface, I can even do uh, emission. So if I if I turn up uh, emission right now, then we'll just get this because the opacity is controlling where we're going to see that. So we'll see the alpha channel. Oh yeah, the alpha, the light is wrecking our alpha channel. Yeah, so that's still good. So we can just turn up emission if we want this outer surface to glow or to seem to glow. You can change the color. It's something like this. this is going to override all that specularity that we saw though. So, you know, if we want to just add a little bit of, of emission to brighten that up a little bit, then we have a nice material that the inside edge will always render as black. Okay, so there you go. Hope that was helpful. Um, this is one of the fun parts in my, I think, just uh, playing around with shading networks and seeing what you can build.